So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori, Creativity, and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do on Instagram under Robin underscore Norgren or on my website, www.josiesartschool.com. I'd like to start with some words from a book called The Crossroads of Should and Must by L. Luna. There was a catch to wholeheartedly going after my dream. I had a full-time job working over 40 hours a week on a startup that I cared about deeply. I was part of a small group of people who wanted to change how people interacted with their email. We were working quietly, intensely for the better part of a year, taking an idea on a post-it note all the way through to the implemented product in Apple's App Store. When I wasn't designing, I was painting. I felt that I had entered one of the most creative periods of my life. But it was neither balanced nor sustainable, and I had sensed that I was quickly approaching a crossroads in my life. I was talking about all of this to a friend when he asked, Have you seen that TED Talk by Stefan Sagmeister? Scooping up his laptop and sitting next to me, he said, We must watch it now. In the talk, Sagmeister, an artist and designer working in New York City, defines the difference between jobs, careers, and callings. I had never thought about them as different things. A job, something typically done from 9 to 5 for pay. A career, a system of advancements and promotions over time where rewards are used to optimize behavior. A calling, something we feel compelled to do regardless of fame or fortune. The work is the reward. I began to wonder which ones I had in my life. And I ask you the same question. Which of these do you currently have? A job? A career? Or a calling? This is from a book called Awaken by Priscilla Shearer. Luke 2.19 Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. We have lost the art of treasuring. In a day when such abundance and prosperity abound, when every sort of gift and gadget can be ours with little more than a few clicks of online action, We no longer know what it means to truly value a keepsake. Things, even people, have become disposable, expendable, easily replaced with a different model if they happen to break or just don't work out like we wanted. Lose it, and we can always get another, probably with two-day delivery thrown in for free. So we don't prize particular things or place significant worth on precious things. Not the way folks once did. We're not as careful to protect, nurture, and preserve them, taking great care with their condition, being sure we're tending to their regular upkeep. And while this may or may not be a tragic loss to our age and history, It's certainly a grave issue whenever this same lethargic posture leaks over into our relationship with God. Perhaps we're faithful in reading his word, 
perhaps we're prayerful and listening for his voice. But if we don't treasure the results of each exchange with him, if we don't see our personal interactions as irreplaceable keepsakes to be held and pondered and handled with care, we'll squander what he is so good to give us. If we aren't careful to note the Spirit's personal conviction to us, whether from our pastor's message or a personal quiet time, if we don't carve our time and space for keeping a record of the web of events where we can trace his handiwork in our lives, the moments slip away forgotten. Life covers them over. A month later, we can't even remember. The details that were so fresh one day are now forgotten treasure. We've grown too casual with the holy. I don't know exactly what Mary, the mother of Jesus, did to treasure the happenings in her son's life. But the original wording that comes down to us as treasured in Luke 2.19 implies a defending, preserving, protecting of those memories. She was determined not to merely be awestruck and amazed by it all the way others were in general, when all who heard it wondered at the things that were told them. Instead, she took it a step further, valiantly keeping and guarding the account. These memories were worth tucking away, preserving, remembering. They were worthy of safekeeping and appreciating. They were, after all, about Jesus. Every instance in which we detect the fingerprints of God orchestrating and intervening, every time we hear the weighty whisper of the Holy Spirit echoing in our hearts, we ought to be quick to preserve those happenings so they cannot be easily forgotten. Mary didn't treat something or someone of such value carelessly. These words and works of the Son of God were and are worth treasuring. Isaiah 48 The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. The Summer Poem by Mary Oliver Leaving the house, I went out to see The frog, for example, in her shining green skin And her eggs, like a slippery veil And her eyes, with their golden rims And the pond, with its risen lilies and its warm shores dotted with pink flowers, and the long, windless afternoon, and the white heron, like a dropped cloud taking one slow step, then standing a while while taking another, writing her own soft-footed poem through the still waters. <laughs> 